here and now, and here we are, Ahmed of Palestine, Steve of the Imperial Center, Imperial Core problem there. And uh, we have uh, a report from uh, Ahmad on uh, Hezbollah that we can begin with. It seems to be the most important action this week. Yes, uh, good day. Good to see you guys. Um, what happened uh, this morning, uh, their local time, uh, uh, what transpires and my analysis uh, paired with facts that uh, Hezbollah uh, made uh, a huge uh, upset to the Zionists by putting different decoys all across southern Lebanon showing that they are uh, intending to attack the Zionist uh, paradise. Uh, that's prompted the Zionists to send a hundred uh, fighter jets and they attacked 40 different uh, sites with uh, each one about four sorties, uh, like you're talking about 200 almost uh, attacks. Anyway, so uh, basically what happened, uh, Hezbollah already had in its uh, position a de another decoy, something, yeah, uh, they had uh, launched uh, over 300 to 340 uh, rocket missiles to the Zionist uh, military bases in the northern Palestine and the Golan Heights hmm. to um, to uh, to uh, empty the so-called uh, Iron Dome missiles uh, from what they have. Then uh, they send uh, unknown number of uh, uh, drones and attack. Uh, the Israeli military uh, security services called Amman, east of Tel Aviv. Also, they attacked another military base east of Tel Aviv and a Mossad Tel, uh, Tel Aviv base east of Tel Aviv. Um, so far, the Zionists uh, haven't, uh, they, in the morning, they boasted that they destroyed 6,000 ballistic missiles ready to attack Israel. I mean, come on. Like Even, even the, the most uh, powerful army in the world cannot prepare 6,000 ballistic missiles to launch at the same time. Never mind a small guerrilla group like Hezbollah. But anyways, it was a decoy. Um, according to uh, Sheikh uh, Hassan Nasrallah, I just finished listening to him. The operation was a success, and he be warned the Zionists uh, if they want to escalate next time, we'll see something different. That's the uh, end of it. Hmm. Wow, it's very impressive that they got into the military installations as far south as Tel Aviv. Yes. That's unprecedented. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and the Zionists, the Zionists hush hush about this. They didn't say anything. Oh, yes. And uh, actually, the Zionists at the beginning, I was listening to it late last night. They said we attacked eight thousand missiles, then reduced it now to six thousand missiles. Now he said no, not so so much. It just only uh, the short range missiles. It's they don't know even their lying is not consistent. Mm -hmm. the, Zionists, the Zionists lie as they breathe this is how they are mm. it's also very impressive that they have you know a a, a political strategy together with the military strategy it's Absolutely. not just a min military mentality but Absolutely. they are focusing on the military bases which is where, the, where, yeah. where they should go yeah yeah, yeah. that's very, very true very true yeah yeah mm. so this is this is for the uh, event of this morning mm. Uh, I mean, late last night, early this morning, uh, in 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 Palestine, the Middle East. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, the uh, Zionists are uh, up against the wall. There, you know, they don't know uh, what's coming when. Nothing. They have no idea of what's happening to them. 
They have to keep on mobilizing their reserve military. Their economy is like nowhere. <laughs> the only thing that keeping them afloat is, you know, the $20 billion that was just voted, you know, in addition, you know, as a reward to, for Netanyahu. That's a speaker's fee, you know, $20 billion, you know, that just <laughs> came down, you it's, know. It's pathetic. It's total pathetic. It's, um, well, well, the Zionist uh, plan is the following, is to continue murdering, killing, uh, and genocide against the Palestinians in Gaza. Uh, even the adding to the the menu of the of genocide is a constant order of Palestinian civilians to keep moving from one place to another, which is really mm. a huge task for these poor people. Mm. Uh, however, the the resistance in Gaza are doing pretty good job. Uh, they had liquidated uh, in the past forty eight hours. They liquidated. In accordance to the Zionists, which they, we know they're lying, six soldiers and, and uh, you know officers and scores of uh, Merkava tanks mm -hmm. and uh, soldiers who have been uh, you know seriously injured to uh, medium injuries. Mm -hmm. So basically, <clears throat> basically the Zionists are getting uh, hammered in the north. Of Palestine, and they're hammered in the south of Palestine. The only thing they are succeed, succeeding or successful with is is the genocide again against innocent civilians of Gaza, which is by all means, it's not a, 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 a military success. Rather, it's a, a coward man work. It's just like the Nazis did to the. Mm -hmm poor people in the concentration camps. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve, I've noticed uh, this week the Democratic National Convention took place. And I heard Camilla Harris talking about Palestine. And she goes into a whole list of things that she likes about Palestine. Uh, recognizing the Palestinian people, right to self-determination, yeah. even, you know. Yeah, but right. <laughs> the one word that she didn't use ceasefire and permanent ceasefire not the truce as as the blinken you know uh actually means you know by ceasefire because the zionist regime has no intention of a permanent ceasefire they don't want a permanent ceasefire they don't want an end to the war they want the war to continue because they think that they can get more backing from the united states to do so and they are getting the backing from the united states to do so so, you know, why do they need a permanent ceasefire? They've got a war and they've got the funding for it, you know, so that's all they need, you know, to continue. There's no sort of practical military reason for them to back down until they're forced to back down. And uh, Hezbollah has some of the force to do so. On Sarala, also, they have significant force and they're able to uh, cut off one side, you know, of, of the... The Zionist regimes, you know, um, supply lines and supply lines are sort of fundamental to any sort of military operation. So uh, this is, you know, Harris is responding not to uh, state a policy position in favor of self-determination for the Palestinians. No, that's not what she means. <laughs> not at all. What Harris means is that she wants the support of the Palestinian, pro-Palestinian protest movement. That's all it means. So she gives, you know, a few bits, crumbs, that she throws in the direction of the protest movement, and she expects everybody to line up behind her. Really, you know, this is just too much to believe. Hmm. At the same time, no word whatsoever about ceasefire, no word about war provisions, <laughs> you know, as if it doesn't exist, you know, for Harris. <laughs> well, really. It exists for us. So she becomes irrelevant as a result. Hmm. Well, I, I appreciate what you're saying there. Um, the it, You may not be aware of this, but the one of the major uh, um, issues at the convention was the refusal of the convention to allow Palestinians to speak. Hmm. Because remember, the United States is focused on identity politics. Okay? 
So in the views of people, if if a, if an Israeli uh, family member, if, if a family member of an Israeli prisoner, so-called hostage, can speak, then why can't a Palestinian speak? And the DNC refused to allow any Palestinians to speak. Mm -hmm. um, that was a major issue in the convention, which you which you may not which you may or may not have known about. Um, the fact that she wants the United States to be the most vicious and lethal military in the world, um, and the way that way that the her her words about Palestine are simply a mirror of the Biden administration, of which she is the vice president. Mm -hmm. So um, this movement of those who are not who have not yet decided who to vote for is important for Harris because she needs to win the election. However, they they might not vote for her. And this is something that the Democratic Party is faced with, that the Palestinian support movement in the United States is strong enough to possibly cost them the election. Because some people are not going to vote for her. They're not going to they may vote for uh, Jill Stein, they may vote for um the PSL, they may vote for Dr. West, or they might not vote at all. Mm -hmm. Trump doesn't have that problem, does he? No, he didn't have that problem. So, you know, um, unless she's willing to make a formal policy decision before the election and before, before the election, of course, she probably would change her mind after the election because like all American politicians, they vote, they yeah. speak on both sides of, of uh, their mouth. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I, I just don't know what she's going to do because she has to toe the line of imperialism. And the line of imperialism is bomb the Palestinians, attack the civilians, um, give 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 money to to the Zionist regime, and act as if you want a ceasefire, because you have to act that way because you're a member of, of the UN Security Council. Blah 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 blah. blah. Hmm. Therefore, we have to we have to act like we we have to act like we want peace, mm -hmm. but in fact, it's like in Ukraine. We don't want peace, yeah. so that's what she's faced with, and it could. We'll have to see how she does in the election. It might cost her. It might. It might not. I'm not going to try and predict, but I think that's that's the that's the problem she's facing. But the ultimate error was to not let not let a Palestinian speak, because mm -hmm. that would have that would have assuaged assuage some of the demands of the of the undecided movement. And she stupid, stupidly, and I, as a politician, that was a dumb thing to do. If you want to win, you make some concessions to get the votes. That's the way it goes, baby. And she made a terrible mistake. Mm -hmm. I mean, within within the context of bourgeois American politics, so that shows you the hostility of her of her of her administration toward the Palestinians. Because you could have, I mean, you know. I mean, you could have had a black American speak at some some convention, or or a um, Latinx person speak, or or a, a gay person speak. Yeah, we can, because we could we 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 want their votes. But Palestinian was was forbidden, and now and that's it. Just shows you the stance of of other administration toward the Palestinians. In in my opinion, I I may add to that. Uh... Pretty good point, Steve, about not allowing the Palestinians. But this is a, a symptom of a decision that been uh, taken by the the deep party officials. The they call them the backroom big wigs in, in in those parties. Like we remember in 2016, that Bernie Sanders he almost got the nomination in his hand. Yep. Yep. Then uh, within a few minutes, literally a few minutes, they took him out. They parachuted in uh, Hillary Clinton when uh, they decided that Clinton is a Democratic Party nominee. And there was hundreds of thousands of uncommitted voters right. did not vote for her, making her lose the the, the race and right. uh, you know and uh, that fascist uh, got the job again right. uh, we have to realize that the the deep party officials are part of the deep state 
where right. Israel plays an important uh, pillar of the imperialist uh, mm -hmm. system in the West. Agreed. Therefore, allowing a Palestinian a Palestinian member of the the Congress to speak is totally out of order for them. Rashida Tlaib, who tried to speak. Right. And as far as her speech, she went all the way of supporting Israel, protecting her, all that, you know, uh, we know the cliche, they always repeat. It's like, you know, it's like a, a student, a good student repeating the same mantra to his uh, master. Then he threw, as I said, the crumbs to... Hope, hoping that the non-committed will pick up on those crumbs, like, oh, Palestinian human rights and Palestinian self-determination. That's baloney. As long as the the, the military aid still fl flowing, uh, flying in into the Zionist uh, killing machine, as long as uh, money is still channeling uh, toward the Israeli economy, as long as this big, huge armada of American warships and uh, aircraft and you name it to defend Israel with F-22 and F-35s and even attacking submarines. Um, I don't think uh, uh, Harris is uh, any difference than Joe Biden. She is a, a, the continuation of with yes. of Joe Biden, but this time with a colored face and a woman. But right. deep inside is the same exact substance. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Just a tank with lipstick on it. Yeah. Exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Yep. So uh, that, that's what Harris. So I think that's my opinion. I hope that the anti-war, anti-genocide uh, coalition, which is huge, should go and vote in droves to Jill Stein. That's the only candidate who is really for peace, real peace, not the peace of the death of the Palestinian people. So uh, I, I really I call all on all Americans. To, to vote in droves to Jill Stein. Jill Stein has been uh, quite active. She even got arrested at a uh, pro-Palestinian demonstration uh, a month or two ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Cornell West, of course, supports Palestinians, but he's not as active in that area. I think Cornell West has to, uh, 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 you know, uh, support Jill Stein. He's, he's going to split the vote for her. And he should go after her. He is not as known and well known and has presence as Jill Stein. I think he should go to that uh, corner. Like that yeah. fascist, little fascist, J.F. Kennedy uh, Jr., who yeah. went and uh, supported uh, the f other fascist, uh, Trump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps he point. could, you know. Um, but... Uh, it uh, as long as the each of them each of those uh, candidates you know accumulate uh, the uh, votes with which they can work with, then they would end up uh, getting together between two and five percent of the vote. That seems to be you know the possibility here. And but that's doing not so, important. What's important is it's to show the support that uh, Kamala Harris has lost. And she will lose the election. Hmm. And this is it should teach the, the the liberal the liberal democratic party a lesson. Also, it's not just the election is not just only presidential. It's also this election of Congress and uh, yes. Congress. Yes. Yeah. So those people yes. who support the Zionists should be uh, you know uh, taught a lesson not to vote for them. Yeah. Um. Uh... It seems to me uh, as well that uh, that uh, Camilla Harris is is like being set up by uh, Netanyahu because r right now you know like uh, with the continuation of the genocide in Gaza she's not going to get the mo votes of the Muslim Americans who are considerable 
It's more Muslim and Arab and uh, African American and uh, Asian American, even white American is not just the Muslim oh. Americans. Oh. It's it's a it's a it's a rainbow coalition mm. of, yeah. of of true Americans. Mm. Go ahead. If there were a ceasefire, then Camille Harris would have some credibility. You know, she could claim that she had some role to play in bringing about the ceasefire. A permanent ceasefire. A truce even, you know, would help her get some votes. But Netanyahu is not interested, right? Netanyahu wants to continue with the war as long as possible. He wants to make life as so miserable for the Palestinians that they will want to leave, and that other countries will step in with a humanitarian gesture and accept the Palestinians to leave Gaza. That's what's being set up. It didn't work with Egypt. Egypt wouldn't allow the Palestinians to be driven into the Sinai. But other countries, you know, they would, but they would just divide up the Palestinians into little pieces so that they wouldn't have any, you know, political weight and they wouldn't have any cohesion anymore. But that's not going to happen. The Palestinians are the heroes. The Palestinians of Gaza are refusing to give up and they're refusing to blame Hamas, you know, for what the Zionists are doing to them as well. No. Yeah. Yep. So that that's solid. Now, what... Uh, Netanyahu is uh, banking on is the defeat of Kamala Harris. He's not going to concede anything, you know, to the Democratic administration to make them look good. And he wants the Republican administration to come in because then he figures he's going to have unlimited support to continue the war without end. That's the strategy, you know, of the Zionist regime and Netanyahu in particular, and he can get away with it. That's what I see coming up. Well, let me uh, say something. Whether it's Harris or Trump, the war will continue. The so support will continue. The only difference between Trump and uh, and uh, Harris, Trump is a fascist and he knows it and he says it as it is. He supports Israel, go kill them. Versus Harris, who plays a charade game about uh, peace and about the poor Palestinians, and we should, you know, those uh, civilians should not be targeted. Meantime, they're being targeted. So, to me, uh, as a Palestinian, I didn't see much difference when it comes to the outcome on the ground. So, I would rather to see a fascist say it as it is. Uh, <laughs> in the United States mm -hmm. than somebody who plays games like, you know, genocide Biden and genocide Harris. Mm -hmm. In the end, there's Palestinians are killed every day. So uh, having this fascist coming in, uh, Trump I'm talking about, mm -hmm. is not going to increase or decrease the number of the Palestinians being murdered or starved every day. The only difference is only on political arena, which uh, has nothing to do with the genocide going on in Gaza. It's about so-called political settlement, which is uh, the American, that Trump would continue his so-called the deal of the century, or whatever he called it. It's uh, basically giving the West Bank to the Zion state which is uh, the Joe Biden uh, is doing, but without saying it. It's mm. the same thing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but I look forward to uh, the combined votes of uh, Dr. Jill Stein, Dr. Cornell West, and the uh, Socialist Labor Party, is it? I don't know too much about that formation. I, I wonder what it is about. But, you know, if they had a combined votes uh, that amounted to between 2 and 5% of the electorate, that would mean that neither of the two bourgeois candidates would have a majority, and therefore they cannot claim the legitimacy that a majority would 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 bring. So then, um, you know, the, any new administration could not claim to be speaking on behalf of all the American people because they didn't have a majority to begin with, even if they might have a majority of the Electoral College. Okay, so if they don't represent a majority of the American public, civil society, then they are obliged to listen to the voice of the people in protest. And if they refuse, then they can be exposed, you know, in that way. So, uh, you know, denying uh, either of those candidates, you know, a majority, I think, is uh, very crucial, politically speaking, and uh, would mark a great advance in terms of the 
the revolutionary momentum that is building up here. And, uh, you know, Jill Stein, you know, <laughs> you know, from what I've seen, you know, and Cornell West, they are revolutionaries, you know, no doubt about it. I've spoke, I've spoken with Cornell West on a, on a Zionist uh, uh, platform one time, and uh, he is very solid. You know, he's he's not afraid of of any pressures uh, that are put on him. He's not afraid of uh, any sort of uh, uh, you know even the support you know that is offered to him. You know, that's not crucial for him. What's crucial for him are the political issues. He's very principled. I admire him, and uh, Jill Stein as well. You know, so. I'm looking forward, you know, to an advance, you know, of an alternative, you know, that will become known to the American people as a result of this election, because their names are going to be on the ballot. Every American is going to go in there, you know, are going to see their names. <laughs> and they're going to realize that there is an alternative that they haven't heard about, you know, and they're going to wonder, how come they haven't heard about these alternatives? How come they haven't been there in, you know, the debates, you know, to be heard? Because they're interested, you know, everybody's becoming political now. Being political is not, you know, a smear like it used to be, you know, being political right. now is a sign of, uh, of being cool <laughs> before, you know, like to be cool, you couldn't be political. You know, you weren't supposed to talk about politics. You weren't supposed to talk about, you know, just like, you know, the old sort of, um, you know, uh, regime, you know, you're not supposed to talk about politics. You're not supposed to talk about religion. And you're not supposed to talk about sex. The three no's. <laughs> Very good. Very good. But I, I just want to throw something in here. I mentioned this last week to you, Abraham. I'm, I'm going to say it again because I think it needs to be said. Uh, you made some very good, uh, very astute points regarding um, what could be the political fallout of uh, votes for Stein, um, for... Um, um, the 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 the, uh, the preacher, etc. But I continue to say, if they don't do anything after the election, I'm not going to say it's meaningless, but it doesn't have the real impact it needs to have. Mm -hmm. After the election, the statement you said needs to be said that this coalition of forces represent this much of the, of, of the voting population. Therefore, there is no mandate the other party has for this or this. And we demand you listen to us in this way, demonstrations, teachings, whatever. And then they're going to have to find a way, if, if they want to continue this, to mention something that Ahmed mentioned, the congressional seats. Mm -hmm. Because that's what controls what bills are passed. If they don't have the people in the Congress to pass the bills, Harris can lose. Trump can lose. Because they, besides, you know, remember, this is a constitutional republic, not a presidential republic. So therefore, the, the Constitution says the laws have to come from Congress. Mm -hmm. And the the after the election, I just I just keep saying this, that there's going to be midterms, there's going to be state races. I'm going to say the focus should all be electoral. But I've noticed that after the election, in my view, nothing is done. And that's been the weakness. Uh, for example, um, I've been mentioned by people who didn't vote for Clinton. That was important. But after the election, there was no movement of those people mm -hmm. to, to, to continue to have impact on the national and international stage. So that's, that, that, that's just my suggestion that we keep that in mind. The post-election Movement has to be strong. For example, right now, and campus have not banned in California colleges. I don't, I don't know if anybody knows that. The state colleges and the UCs, no encampments are allowed. So they're determined to break that movement. That movement of people who don't vote for Trump and don't vote for Harris can be part of the trying to assist that movement to get rebuilt, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. Last time, it uh, you know the movement didn't continue because Bernie Sanders, you know, uh, cocked out he was given there an appointment you, you know like uh, he was told to shut up you know and 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 take over some labor committee you know like that he made some advances in okay fine you know like <laughs> oh, what is that strategy all about you know socialism domestically and fascism internationally you know like what kind of you know uh, what kind of position is that you know i'm very disappointed in bernie okay so he's gone Will he ever come back? No, doesn't look like it. No, okay. doesn't look like it. No, yeah, no. I don't think so. I think, mean, mm -hmm. but those, but those, those campaigns that exist, Stein, 
PSL, others will have to find a way to coalition to build a united front around some issues. Yeah. Because if if, yeah. if if what we predict is going to happen, if it, if it occurs that large numbers of people don't vote for Harris and they either sit out or don't vote, or vote for other candidates, that, that body of massive of people has to be organized after the election. Hmm. It, it just it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. I don't know yeah. why. Hmm. Well, yeah, that's also going to be an important indication. Yeah. Uh, the right. uh, level of participation. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Hmm. 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 Okay. Very good. Okay. So uh, we're on track. We know what uh, is going on. We know what is uh, likely going to be going on. And we know uh, what we have to do. So, exactly. May, 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 may I make one, one, one other uh, point I want to refer to is happening in the world. You know, we don't know what happened really with Nord Stream. But the German government is now trying to point the fingers at a body at, at, at the Ukrainian government. I mentioned this for a reason. Not that I believe the story or don't want to believe the story. That's not the issue. They have determined now there'll be no more aid for it. There'll be no more aid, aid, aid for, they've said there will be no more aid for uh, Ukraine. Now, that's an interesting assumption, isn't it? If we say you bomb our pipeline, we're not going to give you any more money. Sounds pretty sensible to me, mm-hmm. even if it might just be politics right now. The point is, at least that government can say, well, this behavior you exhibited is not in our interest. We have to punish you. United States will not do that to Israel or, you know, as far as, you know, giving it money. That, that's why the ceasefire talk, like I may say, is just talk. They yeah. want no ceasefire. Yeah. 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 Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Well, this is a long haul. This is a long haul struggle, you know, like, uh, yes, it is. you know, we've experienced uh, wars in Gaza previously when that lasted two weeks, you know, and, and after um, the Zionists lost their, their gleam, you know, and uh, didn't look so shiny anymore, you know, with all the blood, then the United States stepped in, you know, and, uh, and took the, uh, uh, and took on, you know, a humanitarian face and said, okay, you know, this has to stop now. And then it would stop. This time it's not stopping. No stopping, right? It's uh, what, what's going on in, in in Gaza. It's beyond Gaza. It's about the American and Western imperialist hegemony in the Middle East. Thank Whereas you. Israel represent that hegemony and and uh, superiority. So that deterrence that mm. Israel was priding itself. I am the strongest army, and everybody fears me, and. I could do whatever I want, and et cetera, was shattered on October 7th. Right. Uh, more so, it's still being shattered in Gaza by by the uh, the Palestinian resistance said fasting. It, more, uh, more so by Hezbollah, you know, uh, decimating uh, the Zionist uh, security in the in the north. So Israel is 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 not the Israel of Octo- before October seven is not the Israel of the October after seven. So what the, the killing and the murdering is one of the wishful thinking of Netanyahu, but the, the real the real uh, reason behind the American and German and British and French all those imperialist powers support for Israel is to reestablish again their hegemony in the middle east after they are losing a big war in ukraine they are losing their right. their grip in the in the far east mm. so they cannot allow this area to be lost to the axis of resistance so mm. that's why the deep states in the united states the 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 deep states in both parties are on board with with Netanyahu. The issue is not Netanyahu. It's beyond Netanyahu. It's the colonial state of Israel. It's the imperialist uh, goals in the Middle East. So for them, this is a, a war to be or not to be. This is why hmm. the United States is supporting Israel. It's hmm. nothing else. It's not Netanyahu having having a hold over them. 
Hmm. It's 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 work. They're working together to reestablish, and they're fa- failing to establish their hegemony and deterrence hmm. in 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 Palestine against the axis of resistance. Hmm. Simple. And this is also in the wake of the defeat in Afghanistan, too. Absolutely, hmm. absolutely. So uh, yeah. you know, when when America sends all its uh, firepower to the Middle East, three air uh, air carriers. Armada of ships, miss, uh, uh, missile uh, submarines, etc. It's not because they wanted to, you know, work uh, to uh, to help Israel defend Israel. They are part of it. it. It's an American war in the Middle East, and it's just, sadly it's it's just manifesting itself in Gaza. But mm. it's beyond that. Mm. Yeah, this is what I would call a, a make or break moment. This yeah, period, absolutely. you know, is historic. You know, like absolutely very, and very when, crucial. When Netanyahu and all his he co criminals on on the day of October seven, this they call this is the second war of independence, and mm-hmm. this is either to make or break. He is he mean it. He's right. Yeah. He mean it because he he they lost their deterrence. Israel was established on two uh, on two myths. Myth number one. The superiority and deterrence in the Middle East. Myth number two, the the that it's a safe haven for Jews in uh-huh. around the world. Uh-huh. So those two myths being shattered uh-huh. by who? By uh-huh. twelve hundred Hamas uh, special forces, which really, uh, you know, uh, smashed these two myths to smithereens. Mm-hmm. And every time they try, the Zionists try to establish that, it's like somebody is digging himself out of the hole by digging himself deeper. Mm-hmm. It's there's no way out. They're, mm-hmm. they're finished. Yeah, that's how I see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, amongst the uh, the Jewish population, there is a tremendous momentum from the younger generations to uh, overthrow the Zionist dictatorship over the Jewish communities in the diaspora which are a majority of the Jewish people in any case. Plus, already 1.3 million Israelis, Jewish Israelis, have left the Zionist state. <laughs> I don't think they intend to go back either, you know. I mean, in the north, you know, 100,000 left, you know, because, you know, it was uh, no longer under the control of the Zionist military, you know, like, and <clears throat> around Gaza as well, all of those uh, settlements that they call kibbutzim, on stolen land, uh, you know, they, they haven't come back either. You know? So this is, you know, uh, existential crisis of its own making by the Zionists themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Very good. Good points. Very good points. Thank you. <sighs> okay, comrades. Okay. That's good for this week. And uh, we expect... Uh, we expect that... Uh, we know rationally what is going on and uh, that is the determining factor you know the uh zionist regime and and the u.s imperialism they're not rational anymore all they have left is military power absolutely and military power does not defeat logic <laughs> that's the point you know that's it that's all <laughs>